Hello, my name is Mackenzie. I am from Midland College, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the Apply Texas application for Midland College. Super simple to do. Just follow these steps and we'll be good to go. First thing you're going to do, if you've never um, completed an Apply Texas application before, you're going to hit right here where it says create your account now. And it will bring you It'll bring you to this page right here, my account dashboard, my profile. The main thing you have to make sure you do is check this checkbox right here just to make sure that you've read terms and conditions, all that good stuff. So we are actually going to do an application for our mascot. Um, so let me get his name real quick, his full name, you know, government name. Let's see. Okay, so. That is his last name, Chaps. First name is Pepe. Middle name. And no socks. So, but you would obviously put your last name, your first name, and your middle name if you have one. His date of birth was March 30th of 1972. That was actually the day that the college opened. His place of birth was Midland, Texas. Come on, there we go. And on this one, you would only have to select the country if it's not the United States. His grade level, he has graduated high school and he is a US citizen. This would alter for you, obviously, if you are not a high school graduate or you're a senior, junior, doing this for dual credit, whatever, you'll just need to do it this. And are you a US citizen? You would just need to answer whichever one applies to you. His email address, we're actually going to use the enroll account. And this is actually also good if you get past the Apply Texas um, stage and you have any further questions, you can also email enroll at midland.edu and our enrollment navigators would be more than happy to help you out with any questions you have. Also make sure that you check this box where it says this email is correct and I have access to it. Okay, permanent street address. We're gonna actually put in the address for the college, 3600 North Garfield Street. Uh, street address line two is only if you live in an apartment. Midland state is oh, too far. Texas 79705. And again, you'd only have to select the country if not the United States. Physical address would only apply if your permanent address is where you like what's on your driver's license, but your physical address is where you're staying that is different from that. And then you'll have to see the physical address good until whenever you change it on your driver's license or whatever. So his phone number, we're actually going to put in the college's phone number. So that would be 432-685. Let me double check so I didn't put the wrong one. Say five forty five hundred. International preferred phone country cone. If your phone number is one from outside of the United States, that's what you'll put there. Preferred phone, preferred phone type. We'll put that out in his work phone because it is it's our work phone as well. Emergency contact. We'll do Mrs. We'll do his mom, Molly Chap. I'm making all this up. Her phone number is the same. Two eight five forty five hundred. Street address, same address, North Garfield Street. Oh, come on, not Tennessee. And email address, she doesn't have one, so we won't put that in. This is what you would fill out for your mom or your dad, husband and wife long-term boyfriend, girlfriend, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whoever, in case of an emergency, we would contact this person. So, um, well, uh, Pepe Chap is a bird, but let's just say that he is a white bird, I guess. Are you Hispanic or Latino? He is not. He is white. You would fill this in for however this applies to you. As you can see here on this list, uh, Hispanic Latino is not there because it is in this question up here. So you would put yes or no. And then if any other ones apply to you, you would check those as well. Pepe is a male. And we'll create a password for him real quick. Okay. 
get to check that you're not a robot. And usually it has you create, do a little quiz, but I guess not today. And we'll go ahead and hit save profile. Oh, look at that. There's already an account with that email address, so we have to change it. So let's do welcome. This is also good if you think that you have done an application, but you have, but you don't remember the information. If you get through all this part, all this portion, and it says that your email must be unique, that means you already have one. So all you would need to do is go back to that main page and just reset your password. So we'll change it to the welcome email, which I also have access to. Do I not a robot? And save profile. There we go. There we go. So your username is going to be your email address every single time. So keep that in mind that that's your email address and the password is the one that you created at the bottom. So now we're going to move on to the application. So you're going to go to the My Applications tab, start a new blank application, or you can hit Create a New Application now. They'll take you to the same place. Okay, create a new to your application. Okay, and this is where you're going to pick Linden College. We are at the very bottom in the West region, Linden College. And this is where you will specify if you're taking these courses for dual credit or not. So you'll are you applying for college courses? Pepe is not, but if you are, you would just say yes. Okay, semester of entry. Let's say he wants to start in August. So we'll do fall and hit continue. Okay, so Pepe's major is actually STEM. So we'll do science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And his major is going to be specifically in engineering. Now you can go through every single one. We can go back to this previous page right here. Oh, see, there's the email. And you can pick through all of these and go around and see what one interests you the most. Um, we'll say that Pepe is doing STEM. And then you'll just select your specific major, which is his engineering, and hit continue. Okay. I'll hit continue to my application. Okay, so a lot of this information was pulled from the profile. So a lot of it you won't have to turn in. So like you can see here, his name and things you won't have to check it to turn in. This one is that same question from before about the dual credit. We will just keep it at no. Your social security number is required because we need it to uh, merge your account together and send you tax forms at the end of the tax year. Whenever you, um, if you pay your tuition, you receive a specific form for, your, for a tax break. And that is how we send it to you, is because you have your social security number on file. Also, if you plan on doing the FAFSA, we need a social security number on your uh, uh, Apply Texas account to link to your FAFSA account. So we're just going to put in one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, oh, three, five, six, seven, eight, oh, oh, missed it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Go. Okay. Obviously, as you can see, his birthday, his name was pulled over. If you have a preferred first name other than Pepe or whatever your name is, you can put that right here. And if you attended another college under a different last name, say you got married or something like that, that is where you would put it, right here. Place of birth, they pulled it. Citizen, they pulled it. Number eight, status of current U.S. military service member. So this is if someone um, like your father or your mother is a veteran, current U.S. military service member, spouse or dependent, spouse or dependent, anything like that. This doesn't apply to Pepe. Permanent address, again, they pulled it over from the profile. Same thing with the phone number and the emergency contact, as well as your email address. Family educational background, his mom did go to college. Let's say some college. My mom. Dad got his associates. Go. Hispanic race pulled that. Gender pulled that. Texas conservatorship. At which time, at any time in your life where you placed in foster care, he was not. He had his mom and dad. But if you did, or if you were in the Texas um, conservatorship, um, you would just hit yes or no, depending on whatever applies to you. Okay. Looks like invalid social security number. Okay, let's put it in a different one. Okay. 
All right. You would just check this box that says, yes, my name or birthday is correct. If it is, if not, you would just go back. Let's save. All right, educational background. So you're gonna hit find your high school. Pepe went to Robert E. Lee High School. Robert E. Lee School. This is where you would put, even if it was from a different country, you would put your uh, your one, your one school here. Select the country, United States is at the top, which bugs me because it's not in alphabetical order, but whatever. The state, obviously, Texas. City, Midland. And the type was high school. All right, as you can see here, if my head would get out of the way, there we go. Robert E. Lee High School on 3500 Neely Avenue is right there. You'll just check that little bubble. All right, good to go. I have disappeared, but I'm still here. His graduation date, he graduated a few years ago. You know, he was born in 1972, so you know, he's been out for a while. We'll do May of 90. Okay, if you've gone to another high school other than the one you listed, you would just check this box and more of these boxes would show up. He is not homeschooled by default because he went to a, private, to a public high school. He has not done a GED either because he has went to a, private, a public high school. If either of those apply to you, you would hit yes or yes. For the GED question, you would just have to answer what type it was and when you received it. So Pepe has not been to college, but if you have and you need to transfer some credits, you'll hit find your college or university one. And the same box that popped up for this will pop up again. And you would just put in the name of the institution, the city, the country, all the good stuff. You just need to make sure that you put in your attendance dates and how many credit hours you earned. Um, usually most classes are three credit hours. So you would just do the math on that one. It doesn't have to be exact because we are going to receive your transcript. Are you currently on academic suspension? Again, this is only if you've done it for a college and we'll hit save changes. Oh, oh, there I am again. Hello. Okay. Uh, Pepe did not take any tech part courses, but if you had, you would hit yes. Please indicate on what basis you are seeking admission. He is a high school graduate and he's going to be attending to receive an associate's degree. Again, if that does not apply to you, you would just go through all the options back up here. Um, are you a college transfer that's degree seeking, readmission from a prior semester, dual credit, high school or readmission, whatever. And same thing with, do you want to earn a certificate? Just earn credits to transfer, whichever one, and then we'll hit save changes. Okay, this is a lot of words, so I'm going to try to make it as easy to understand as possible. During, excuse me, the year prior, so from today to last year on this date, um, which, uh, did you attend a public college or university? Pepe did not, so we'll hit no. If you did, you would put yes, and then hit save and continue. Okay, so obviously he lives in Texas. Did he live here for 36 consecutive months? Doing the math, that's three years. So he has lived here for three years, um, leading up to his high school graduation. And then when you begin your semester, will you have lived in Texas for at least a year? Yes. All right, this is just verifying that everything is correct. If you answer no to these questions, if those questions don't apply to you, it will take you a couple more steps to complete this question. If you have any questions at all, just email us at welcome at midland.edu. We will be more than happy to help you out. So we're going to go ahead and hit save page and continue with application. Okay, are you a single parent? He's not. So we'll just hit no. But any of the ones that say optional right here, you don't have to answer them if you're not comfortable with it. You don't even have to hit no answer. You can just hit save and knowledge. For the sake of the application, we're going to go ahead and answer all the questions. Okay, Pepe is not homeless, so you would hit no on that one. Okay. Parent veteran status. He does not have his parents in the military, so you would hit no. But if this applies to you, you would have to hit yes. This one is one of the ones that is required. Okay, displaced homemaker. This one's a little bit tricky. Are you a homemaker, homemaker trying to re-enter the workforce? Are you unemployed, employed less than full time, anything like that? If any of that replies, um, applies to you, you'll go ahead and hit yes. Um, it does not apply to Pepe, so you'll hit no. 
texting permission. We're not going to text you at like two in the morning saying, hey, how's it going or anything like that. This is just telling you if you are missing any uh, documents, if you're missing your college transcript, bacterial meningitis, test scores, anything like that. That's where why we're going to text you. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And no answer because it's a landline technically is his phone. So we'll go ahead and hit no answer. But yours would put Verizon, AT&T, Sprint. Okay. If you don't want the directory information released to third parties, you must submit a request to withhold directory information form. Just go ahead and click I understand and hit save. Okay, and like we said before, he is registering for the fall semester. If you are not registering for the fall semester, you're doing another one. You can go ahead and pick another one and hit save. Okay, this is telling us all custom questions have been answered and saved, so we can hit save and complete this page. Okay, what this page is telling you is now you have to verify your email address. So what you're going to do is check your email. You will have received an email from Apply Texas saying, hey, we got this application, here's what you need to do. In the email itself, there will be a link that's highlighted in blue, like this one is right here. And basically what you'll need to do is click on that link, a little box will open that says email address at the top. You'll put in your email address and hit submit. And that's it, you can come right back here to this computer, to your um, computer, laptop, whatever you're completing your application on and keep going on this page. If you didn't receive an email, you can check the box that says resend the email and resend it right here. If you did receive it, you don't have to worry about this box right here. Okay, then you'll just scroll down, you'll answer these questions. This is a lot of words, so we'll go ahead and try to answer and tell you exactly what they mean. This one is saying that um, Midland College will not sell your information to third parties. Um, we will give it out to colleges and financial aid opportunities and things like that, but we will never sell your information because that's just rude. Check that box that you understand. This one is saying that if needed, you will need to submit proof of your bacterial meningitis vaccine. This one is saying that if you're accepted, you'll abide by the code of conduct, which is very easy. Just don't throw parties or anything. Okay, THECB contact acknowledgement. This is saying that you will receive um, educational outreach purposes or uh, information regarding educational outreach purposes, financial aid, scholarships, study abroad stuff, uh, student loan information, anything like that. I would say yes personally, because who doesn't like free money from financial aid? If you don't want to do that, you can opt out and say no. Okay, this is just telling you everything. You need to note the financial aid information. You'll have to fill out the FAFSA for that, the FAFSA Free Application for Federal Student Aid, non-discrimination plus. We don't discriminate against race, nationality, age, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, color, height, whatever. Uh, we will let you in regardless of any of those things that apply to you. And because it's a community college, we don't charge an application fee. So you don't have to pay us any money for filling out an application that takes 20 minutes. You know what I mean? So after all of that is completed and you have verified your email address, you'll hit save and proceed. There will be one more page that will say, um, after you have submitted this application, um, you cannot change it through the application itself. You'll have to go through your enrollment navigator through the school. You'll just hit I understand and hit submit. And there you go, you're all done. So I hope this was all very informative for you. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email us at welcome at midland.edu. And we will be more than happy to answer any questions you have or help you through the process. We'll set up an appointment with you and see if we can help you out with any of these things. I hope this was very informative for you and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.